I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Sound Podcast and our ongoing coverage of the Olympic Games. We're bringing you the biggest stars, the biggest names in sport with high swim IQ to help us unpack all of these great moments. Today we have two-time Olympian, three-time Olympic medalist, Katie Hoff. If you're out there and you're listening and you, and you want to pop in, you've got to go to our Instagram account. That's at K-T-H-O-F-F-7, at K-T-H-O-F-F-7. Get on the follow. Mel Stewart's on the follow. So tell me about your Olympic experience in your house. What, what, how, how are you watching the Olympic Games? So I am either watching the Olympic Games from my couch but I would say primarily from my bed because my husband and I are early sleepers. It starts at 9.30. Um, although last night I was in a panic because I read something wrong and I was like, oh, it's not on until 10. And then I saw something pop up that you guys posted and I'm like, we're missing it. So I was a little frantic. Uh, but yeah, this is the first time I'm really intensely tuning in. Um, you know, I, we've talked about this before, but 12 was tough, 16 was tough. And I only was kind of just, catching glimpses of, of friends, but I've full on been watching it. I've been getting all the chills, all the nerve wracking feelings. And it's been, it's been really cool to see some surprises, um, you know, some, some heartbreak, which is, which is always there. And I, I really, I feel for both. So um, I'm having, I'm having a good time so far. Well, let's, let's give this its due. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. And it's a, uh, you know, mental health has been a huge part of these Olympic games and there's all sorts of fights on the uh, <laughs> with with keyboard warriors so upset, Insane. calling athletes wimps, and and they're they're saying they're giving up, and and uh, so let's I, I'll start this by saying I'm an old person. I am so far past my Olympic experience. On balance, I had a really positive Olympic experience. It, it was it was layered, but I still I still feel like I'm suffering from PTSD. I always. I always break down a few days before it starts and I have migraines and, and back pain and I'm laid out in bed for 24 or 48 hours. And the truth is that's the reality. Um, yeah. What is your experience like? Cause I, I mean, you know, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I think I posted something. Yeah. I guess, what did you call it? The, the keyboard warriors or the armchair critics or, you know, and that's only increasing now, I think because, like, I think it's always been there, but as social media continues to expand, continues to grow, it's just becoming this, just this epidemic, I think. And people just have this thought and they get to go like, boom, 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 and then they get to spray and spew out their negativity. And that it, it's interesting because I, I've been keeping up with it and I obviously have my thoughts about it. And I actually did have a moment where two nights ago, I just started crying, <laughs> just started getting emotional and crying. And I was like, God, why am I doing this? It's not because, of course, the feeling of being there and, and not being there. There's always, like you said, you're always gonna have that feeling. But I think for me, it, it was on the other side of it, like the the half or sixty or eighty percent, whatever the percentage of people who are understanding of this. Just I feel like for the first time, it's felt like, wow, winning just a medal, just being there that's a win. <laughs> and I think for the longest time, I've had this weight that has just always felt like, and we've talked about, like, you don't win gold and people are like, that's a fail, you know? And, and I think a lot of people, Simone being obviously the front runner with this, are uncovering what that pressure is truly like on a really large scale. We can talk about it a million times till we're blue in the face, but she's had a platform and she's been able to blow this thing up. And I think it's incredible and it's getting chills right now because it is what it's like. It is crazy. It is, you do feel that weight if you don't feel like you live up to the expectations of everybody, yourself, your country, your coach, your family. Like it's this weight. And I just broke down in a kind of a positive way of like, wow, like we're making a breakthrough. Like people are seeing this. Of course, there's the people who, you could punch them in the face with it a thousand times and are never going to get it. But I think 
the amount of messages I've received from people that I don't think previously got it and now are, are getting it is, is really, really special to me. Well, th- just uh, so folks out there know, in case they missed it, uh, you do detail this and you do share, you are vulnerable in your book, Blueprint, an Olympian story of striving, adapting. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's something you can buy on Amazon for a period of time. I knew it was the number one book in swimming on Amazon, but it's, it, you, you, I think you did a great job of, of sharing that and it's, uh, and it's an important part of the narrative. You know, what's weird is I'm, I'm insecure. At Swim Slam, we're, our job is to be critical. And we try to do it from this journalistic point of view. But we're, you know, I feel bad. I was, I, I was calling a belly flop of the day, the women's 4x200 freestyle relay, where the Australians are off the, the top of the podium. And they should have been there because Ariane Titmus went a full second slower on the leadoff. But I feel I just I feel this bad feeling in my gut. So I tried to like temper it, but it's a uh, she's the star of these games so far. Yeah. And the truth is, it's a brutal journey, and I have no idea just how empty her tank is emotionally coming off a pandemic. Uh, so I got a lot of compassion for athletes, but a lot also a lot of compassion for my old older peers who are retired. And uh, so let's. I wanted to address that. I feel like it's an elephant in the room, but in terms of positivity and your experience, you, you, we always watch our events with, uh, with a little more focus. You have a little more swim IQ. Take me through your, your races, watching it in bed with your husband. You know, what are you seeing? What did you see? Yeah. So I guess starting, you know, it's crazy even more so now watching the games back and reliving like oh my gosh like after day two I've done four four hundreds and it's just beginning I'm like whoa (laughs) I'm getting more exhausted watching it now with that perspective and you know when I was in it it was just like go 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 but to start the 400 I am I mean the first thing is just I I had heart palpitations like before just like that that view behind those swimmers as they're about to walk out and walk around the corner I can just distinctly remember how I was feeling Michael coming around the corner Pat and Beisel and I on the back like it's so clear still and that was 13 years ago you know I I think with with the 400 I am it's tough because it it switches so much and so you know that one just to see Emma deliver and, and Haley deliver on that that's such a hard race to do day one. Like it's that you're, you're having your break and swim. You're already nervous as anything. How am I going to start off? How am I going to feel? And to be able to deliver in the way that they both did going best times, like that is, that's a medal of honor in itself at the Olympic games, going through the travel, having just tapered for trials. Like there's so many factors. And so to me, that was the most impressive part about that. Um, and I, I, you know, Emma, coming in and, and making a big drop at trials and then making another big drop at, at um, the games. She's got a bright future ahead of her. And I have a feeling my record is going down pretty soon here. So um, that, that's been cool to watch. Four, four, just, uh, just for the record, 431.12 is correct? Yes. Oh, still there. Still there. It's got to feel good. It does feel good. It does feel good. Um, it's one of those, I just, every Olympics, I'm like, oh, for sure, it's going down. You know, it's one of those things that you break a record, you have that pride, but records are made to be broken. You just hope that they're broken by someone who's, you know, a really awesome person and works their butt off. And I don't know Emma personally, but uh, from what I've heard, from what I've seen, uh, she seems she seems like the right girl to do it. So I'm, I'm sure next year that that's sure she's targeting it so it'll be cool to see how that goes down it's a special it's a special connection it's an intimate connection uh you do feel connected to the person who takes down your record we were talking to dara torres and she's like i feel very close to simone manuel for taking down my american record in the 50 free so yes you're going to be able to have that moment at some point in the future (laughs) and i will definitely be reaching out to her that's for sure you have to. All right. Uh, it, it's great to see. T- I, it, it, I felt like it was great to see Team USA on the podium in the 400 IM. That's always satisfying. Uh, it's um, take me on to the 200 IM. Not for, for 400 free is next. For, oh, okay. oh, excuse me. My, my, my apologies. 400 free. <laughs> so 400 free day two. 
this one was very interesting to me. And this one, I got a little triggered in not in the way that you're probably expecting to watch Katie have a lights out swim right off her best time. The fastest she's gone in a really long time. And she, you could see she reacted like, of course you want gold. But as soon as that happened, and as soon as she got touched out, I remember thinking, bring on everyone who doesn't understand what it's like to go to the Olympics and swim your best. And sometimes you can't control what the other athletes are doing. And I think that whole superhuman-esque piece that gets attached to Simone also gets attached to Katie. And I just, I think that was a fantastic swim. And, and I think it was, it was the first time that I saw people, and maybe I'm just haven't been paying attention the last eight years, but for me personally, it was the first time that I saw people coming to that defense of, hey, she won a silver medal. That needs to be celebrated. And that I think is what initially triggered me to start feeling emotional just because of my experience of getting silver in the 400 free in Beijing. So uh, that, that, that race, um, I mean, you, you got to give it to her, right? She was 356. That is, that is a blazing fast. Like I can't even, she flipped at the hundred, flipped at the 200. Like those are fast times in the hundred and 200, just standing alone. And again, I, I, that whole, I wish there was a, a normal average Joe in the heat so people could see just how blazing fast those times are um, and just how ahead of their time they are. You know, you look at the 400 I am and it's, it's actually slower than, than it was, you know, in, in past years. But the 400 free has just exponentially gotten so much faster. And like many have said, um, it's credit to Katie, right? Katie pushing that limit, pushing the envelope and dipping it well under four minutes. We watched her so many times, be so consistent, be so to, to be so fast, so great. It's interesting, uh, all the, the, the keyboard warriors and the tongue wagging and the criticism, but I remember watching her very closely in that post-race interview after the 400 meter freestyle and, I, and, and thinking to myself, she is 100% okay. Yeah. Like she, she's, there's, it, there's, swimming is the most honest and vulnerable thing you can do. There's no lying when you're in the pool. Uh, and she was completely honest with herself and gave everything she had when a lights out swim. And I'm, and I, I just remember thinking she's entirely fine with that silver medal. If anything, she, she, she's going to have in, in, in years to come, she'll be really proud of it. She'll like, she'll, it'll have a special meaning for her. Yeah, totally agree. I did the same thing. I'm like, well, I wonder, I wonder how she's feeling. Cause that's all I really care about. If she's happy, I'm happy. And uh, yeah, I just, I was very, uh, relieved to see that that was how she was feeling all right we're on to our next event what is what is the next event in the lineup because I, I screwed up the last one I, I'm, I'm skipping over i'm skipping over your events the next is the marathon of two days so it's the 200 i am and the 200 free double oh. yeah yeah so that's what well, you're you're 200 free american record that american record fourth off the podium if i remember correctly which is like why wow, that's tough I don't, I don't know. I, we, we've talked about this. We have talked about this. Yeah. And I think it, it, I, 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 mean, I didn't do a mile before, or I didn't have to do a mile after my turn to free. I had to do a 200 I am, but I very much related to everyone was talking about, Oh my gosh, this double I'm like, totally get how she's feeling right now to some extent. And watching that 200 free, it was so, it was just so hard to watch because again, like, I know like you're fighting with every ounce and strain in your being and you could see it all over her face when Katie touched just, I get chills talking about it. Just, you could just see the hurt and you could also see at the same time, which is exactly what I was doing, broke the American record. I got fourth. Guess what? I don't have time to be upset. I don't have time to analyze what, what happened in that race. I have another event in T minus 40 minutes and you know, they, they're kind of following her throughout and, and showing her and I could see that look in her eyes the very similar to the way I have that look in my eyes and to see uh, I'm going on going off of my events right now I'm going off topic but I can't I gotta talk about this um just to see her reaction she's so stoic she's so put together so at least it looks like you know externally and to see that reaction that relief after the mile when she conquered everything again I, I got emotional. Like, it was just like, oh, yes, world. Like, I, I am Katie Lidecki, 
And it, it was just to see her have that, that moment of emotion and just pure human what was really, really special. Now, my 200 IM didn't quite go the same way. Uh, that, that was really, really hard for me to, to go from turn to free, put it all on the line, did the best I could, and then came back and just same thing, just didn't have it um, and got fourth again. So that night was, was a tough night for me, um, but it, it was one of those things I look back and well, I still got the American record on that night. So <laughs> I got to look back on that night and be okay with it. Team USA in the 200 IM, I was, I was, I was happy with the performance. How did you feel about it? I felt good. I thought, I thought for a second we had it. I thought we had it. Uh, but it, again, like the reaction to see Kate and Alex, they were so happy. They were so excited. It, 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 there's so many different reactions of medal. <laughs> when you get a medal, is that person really happy? Was it their best time? Did they get touched out for the gold? It's, it's just a, such a mixed melting pot of emotion. And so that's always what I look for. They touch the wall. Do I see genuine joy? Both of them were so amped. We got two Americans on that medal stand. And so I was like, okay, check. Like I feel, I feel good with that. We got two of us. Obviously we want to reclaim that gold at some point um, from a long time ago, but uh, at least, at least we got two in there. Four by 200 free. Four by 200 free. How tough, uh, you know, it's actually very similar to what happened last night. All in, you know, wait, all three of us, all three realized went under the world record and we just didn't come out on, on the right side of that. And I, I think they all felt very similar, right? They put everything on the line. They did everything they could possibly do. They broke the world record. Like, what more can you expect? And so again, I, I feel like there was this outpouring of love and support because silver is great. Breaking your American record is great. All of those things. And I think for, for mine, right. I, I anchored in the fastest split of my life in history, in, in American history. And so um, I think while that was tough for me in that moment, because it was kind of like in my mind, my last shot at getting a gold medal, I look back now and like, what, what more can you do? You break a world record. That's the, the most you can do. And so it was, it was really exciting to see, you know, the two veterans to see Allison Schmidt get her 10th Olympic medal. Like oh, that girl is, is so near and dear to my heart. So seeing that for me was really, really special. Um, I was actually talking with Katie this morning and she was like, Schmitty literally did not stop giggling and yelling for three hours straight. Like we're having breakfast, we're walking, we're in the world. <laughs> She's like, you she started like yelling out and giggling. I'm like, that's the best when you can have a really intense nerve wracking moment, but at the same time sharing it with three other women and just in being, it sounds like they were able to be in the moment, look around, appreciate it for what was happening. And that's, I think, really unique. So that was, I was happy to feel that. What, what, what's interesting is I think most people will, will look back at, at Katie Ledecky's um, schedule and her performance, and there's a lot of judgment. But wow, she, it feels to me like at this Olympics, I'm seeing more of that heart of a champion than I've ever seen before. We saw at World Championships in 2019, she was sick. Uh, she had a virus, then she got better. And if anybody understands what it's like when, you're, when you've tapered and you get sick, you taper, you get sick, then your body clears the, the virus or the cold and you, and you snap back and you feel like hell, but you can still perform what she did in 2019. But at, at this Olympics, this is, she's healthy. She's being challenged. And when it counts that, that, I mean, that, that, that anchor on the four by two in her freestyle relay was, you know, I, I don't know about you. I know you're watching from bed. I'm watching from the couch. I was on my feet, jumping up and down. She's just reeling everyone in. Yeah, it was. I, I'm like, I think we're having a Lezak moment here. Very close to having a Lezak full gold medal, but but impressive. Were you were you, were we off the bed? Were you jumping up and down? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I know that when my husband and I have kids, we're going to be this way. Like, I get really silent when I'm nervous. I don't know why I just don't have that like ah, screamy thing and neither does he like when, when he gets silent I'm like, you okay you're nervous is everything going all right and that's how I was I just I just had this like my heart just kept dropping into my stomach and I'm just looking and I'm just like come on come on like just willing her to go forward even more than she was and I actually really love the whole uh 
showing how fast they're going, like the meters per second. It's really helpful because it, it gives me, well, either calm or not calm, but like if, if it's going like Dressel last night, I was watching like, okay, okay, it's good. It's good. He, no one else is going really faster than his meters per second. So I, I, I like it because sometimes the angles you're like, wait, are they ahead? Are they not? Oh my gosh. You know? And so I, I don't know if that's new. Cause again, I didn't pay attention <laughs> as much in 2016, but I like that new feature. If, if that is new. Well, let's so. give credit. We'll, we'll, give, we'll give credit where credit's due. First of all, when you're watching on television, you're all, the angle is always messing with you. You have to like rewire your brain to understand, okay, bottom of the screen, they look like they're way out in the lead, but they're actually not uh, <laughs> because of the angle. It, 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 it trips you out. But the, the meters per second was something that was innovated on the International Swimming League, which was uh, kind of jarring when we first saw it because they were that you would see that meters per second with the with the with the graphic trailing the athletes in a 25 meter pool. So they were, and they're just so tight together and moving, but it, it's a cool effect. It really looks great in a 50 meter pool, but this, you know, watching the gorilla jump on someone's back and seeing their distance per stroke just collapse. There's a very satisfying feeling for that. I don't want to see it on team USA from a personal standpoint, but seeing that distance per stroke, just like you watch it, get lower and lower and so i enjoyed watching it in, in the butterfly events yeah and i'm sure because everyone like that last 50 i mean you probably had less of this experience than i did in the turner butterfly but that that piano comes crashing down on your back really fast it's okay and then it's suddenly not okay <laughs> so i could see it i feel like that when you see that happen anyone can can fully relate to that of what that looks like again i'm sure someone who has not been in the sport or, or not experienced that is like what's wrong what's happening to that person it's like that you're out of gas that's what's happening to that person you know and and so um i think it gives like a, a real appreciation for hey like at the end of the race the amount of pain that these athletes are under whether they're accelerating or not is there and I, I almost wish there was a way to like show the lactic acid levels. I bet in like eight years, we'll be able to do that, but show like, Hey, this person's at a 15 lactate, they're dying, but they're still accelerating. How impressive is that? Like I, I want to be able to see more stats. I think now that I've been out of it. <laughs> yeah. You, well, you brought us up to the current day. It's uh, what are you looking forward to? And you know, what, what, what do you, what, you know, what's the takeaway from, from this Olympics? You know, we're over halfway through now. We, I, I think that there's going to be, we're going to look back in history and there, there will be stories and it will be, we'll sort of sum this chapter up, 2021. What, what do you feel like this, this chapter of the Olympics will be? I think it's going to show how athletes are, and we already knew this, but just confirming how resilient athletes are. I mean, we're, it almost is like we're forgetting that there was a pandemic and these athletes weren't able to, they were swimming in like little mini infinity pools and out of the water. And yet there's world records, Olympic records, American records being broken. I guess how the world hasn't been broken yet, but Olympic records and American records, hopefully a world record soon. Feels like it feels like a world record. It feels like a world record. But to me that like every it's, it's so easy to forget. That's just human mind. It happens. We move on. We have to forward forward, but when you take a second and you realize that and you realize how these athletes have been so adaptable, I also think that's why there's a lot more emotion, you know, even from, you know, I've never seen Caleb Dressel break down like that and I, and, or Katie, you know, I think there, there's so much that as an athlete, you just push down. It's like, this is really hard not being able to see family. It's not having family there and you just push it down. And then when it finally happens and it's over and you've completed the mission, there's just this release of emotion. And I, I think that's what we'll, what we'll look back on. And, and I also think even to the training piece, right? Like how, how have these athletes been able to do less yards than they ever have for the most part, but swim best time. So I'm wondering if maybe there'll be a little bit of a flip towards, Hey, maybe we don't have to crush a hundred thousand yards meters a week in order to be successful. And, you know, ultimately that will provide more longevity in the sport. I think. I, I think that's going to happen. I, ha I do have to ask because you're, you're, you're smart. You've been in the, you've been on the world stage. You've been to the big show. Um, Ariane, Ariane Titmus is the star so far. The, the, but that, that star role is probably going to be taken over by Dressel. Dressel did something early on 
which was, uh, you know, he wasn't on the four by 200 freestyle relay. A lot of people were wondering why wasn't he on that men's four by 200. My personal opinion is Dave, the, the head coach probably didn't make the decision. I'm thinking Greg Troy, this is my opinion. I don't know if this is a fact, just to be oh, inside look, your opinion. Yeah. My, my opinion is that it's a, that, that Troy probably looked at the schedule, looked at his athlete, Dressel's coach and, and said, you know what? I don't want him to feel this pressure. He's been under too much. And, uh, and the team that made it at trials needs to stand on their own two feet. That's my personal takeaway. The interesting thing is Phelps gets on, on NBC and says, I'm oh, yeah. shocked. He's not on the relay. And I'm, and I'm like, I'm shocked too. You know, I'm like, I'm immediately, once he said it, I'm like, I'm on social. I'm like, I'm shocked. Dressel was <laughs> on the relay. To start, I just started fire. I was, I was, I was a part of the legion of keyboard warriors, passing judgment, and then felt bad. But uh, I, I felt like we got the answer when he won the hundred free, and he and he was crying and said, "This year's been so hard. People don't know how hard this year's been." So, did he make the right choice? Not so in the four by two, I'm Katie. Thought, huh? uh, I, I actually went through a couple of different thoughts on that too. And, and when Michael said it, I, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't had a chance to pay attention as much to the prelims. And so when I saw that, I was like, Oh, interesting. He's not. And at first I, I had that, I think knee jerk reaction of like, well, it's Dressel, right? It's superhuman Dressel. Why not put him, throw him on there. But then I had a different kind of pullback reaction of, yeah, but again, here I am sitting. Yes, I've been to the Olympics, and, but here I am sitting at home. I have no idea how he's feeling physically, mentally. But they know, like they are the expert. It's the same thing when people yell at the TV with a football game, like what happened to that, that play? And it's like, well, did you know what play they were actually trying to execute? No. And, and so I actually kind of came back at myself, like, how dare you? How dare you judge what, what the decision was to be made? And, and this is this is Olympic gold medalist. Greg Troy has been on how many Olympic teams as a coach, coached so many Olympians. I think they got it. And regardless of whether it was the you know perfect decision or not, it was the best decision possible with the information they had. And that, that was kind of what my thought was. And, and you know, unfortunately we didn't medal, but that kind of got to make the decision and move forward. So that's my stance. Team USA and fans in the United States had a clutch their pearls moment of, oh my God, we're off the podium and there's shame. <laughs> and, 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 and by the way, I did feel that I, I was, I was on the four by two relay in 92 and I'm like, well, we're not making the podium. This is, you know, I was, I was, I was angry, but at the same time, uh, I felt like I felt like maybe the decision was made to preserve Dressel for his huge schedule, which was is upcoming, and it, we're in the middle of it now. And uh, and by the time he gets through that hundred free, and by the time he gets halfway through the the heats of the hundred fly, people will forget. A hundred percent, and people don't. Again, that's another like the. It's not just getting out and and swimming multiple races like oh you could just say like okay well it's three 100s free it's three 100s fly he does so much of that in practice it's not just that no one sees the you know blood testing the urine testing the press conferences the warm down the travel like there's so much more to it that doesn't even happen at an olympic trial I mean, that was something i experienced where my heavy schedule I wish someone had maybe saved myself, saved me from myself a little bit. Like, Hey, maybe we don't do one of these events, you know, because it is so much more emotional energy, whether it's a prelim, a semi or final it's emotional energy. Like you have to be a game. This is the Olympics. So even in the semifinals, people could look at someone like Dressel and be like, well, yeah, of course he's going to make it back top eight. Yeah. But he has to go 47 and he doesn't just do that easily. <laughs> you know, I, there's always that, assumption like well yeah but they've done it before but do you know the amount that goes into getting that <laughs> it's always just this assumption from the couch from the bed but when you're in it and you're having to go through all of those minute steps those minute steps add up and make it really challenging so yeah i i don't know i don't have any insider info either but i would guess that is is a big factor into what led to that decision um, and, and Hey, you know, sometimes it stings, 
he don't get on the podium, but I think that's just going to be how many guys watched that from home and, and, and the guys who went through it and thought, all right, never again, like let's light a fire. And I think that's happened so many times within American history where we either we've been touched out in 2000 or something has happened where we've seen, oh, we're, we're not as strong as maybe we always claim we are. Let's light a fire. Let's get back up. Let's fight. So we get back on top of the podium. To close out this conversation, to put a nice bow on it, I think it might be helpful for people to understand something. And it's that, um, and I'll give you my perspective. I would like to hear from you because you're touching on it now, but it's, I do think that an athlete's success or failure at the Olympics is managing their energy systems because we travel and frankly, we're pampered. It feels it in comparison to the Olympic experience. It feels like you're pampered at world champs or pan Pacific championships or U S nationals or the trials meet because you're in a hotel. It's everything's designed so that you're, you're a lot of the problems are taken care of, but when you're on the Olympic team, the Olympic village is uncomfortable. It's a lot of walking. Uh, you're stuck with that food that you get for the entire week. You're, <laughs> you're always at work too. You're never not at work. you you go to bed and you wake up. As soon as you wake up, you're running into people and you're reminded of where you're at. There's no, there's no downtime. No. It's uh, how do you manage that energy? And how, how do you, how do you explain that to someone at their first Olympics walking into their first Olympics? It's tough because I think until you go through it, you don't fully grasp, you know, I think people always, well, in 2004, I was just like wide eyed, everything was going to catch me off guard, but which is why, by the way, Lydia Jacoby is just, I am so enamored with her that she's been able to do that in her first Olympics. But I think, I think it's being able to have blinders and not do too much of this. And even with those blinders, setting as much of a routine as you can, it's so easy to think, okay, well at home at trials, something so small as I always had oatmeal, eggs, and fruit. Well, there's a thousand other options in the village and there's, you know, ice frappuccino and there's all like something so small as that, but that could throw you off your game where we're talking about hundreds of a second and that compounds on itself and you're walking more and you've got a time of the scheduling of the bus. And like, none of that is happening. Like you said, at a national, even at an Olympic trial or world championships. And so I think it's, they referenced this about Dressel uh, last night or no, it was Ledecky, how she has it very planned out what her recovery was going to be, what her eating was going to be her scheduling. And she did this prior. And this is coming from someone at their third Olympics, but there's something to that where just like you're training for what your race strategy is going to be like and everything else, those pieces matter so much more than you even think because at the Olympics, it can be shaken like that because there's distractions, because you're looking here, because you're extra nervous. Like there's just so many things flying at you. And if you don't have something to cling on to, that is your security of a routine. I think that's where a lot of athletes go wrong. And it, it's kind of like, well, how do you expect to swim the best you've ever swam? If suddenly you're switching it all at the last second <laughs> at the Olympic games. And it sounds so simple, but when you're in it, you don't even realize it's happening to you until you look back and you're like, oh, wow. Like, how did, how did I go off on, on that, you know, piece? And now to add on to that, we're not even talking about that. They're having to wear masks and they're having to talk to each other through glass. Like, I think I saw Michael Andrew post something like it was like glass while they're trying to eat breakfast and meals in, in the cafeteria. So that's a whole nother layer that, you know, anyone who hasn't swum at the 2021 Olympic Games can, can we, we can't speak to that, but that's a whole nother level of complexity. We have heard from three-time Olympic medalist Katie Hoff. You can follow her on Instagram at K-T-H-O-F-F-7. Get on that follow. Any final thoughts? I think just be kind. <laughs> that's all I have to say. Just be kind and empathetic and stay curious in the fact that every single one of those people out there are giving their 100% effort and that is good enough. There's not one person there that is trying to give 99%. So just root for them, be kind, be empathetic, and we will all be happy and there will be no worse. <laughs>
You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.